Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome to Educating Animal Trivia. Today our trivia theme is felines. That's right, we are going to be talking about a whole bunch of different types of cats. As always, there'll be 10 questions that are multiple choice or true or false. After each question, I'll kind of wait a couple seconds and give you guys a chance to pause the video and then we'll chat about the correct answer. So let's get started. All right, you guys, let's not waste any time. Let's jump right in with number one. Which of these is not a species of feline? A, a tiger. B, a lynx. C, a caracal. Or D, a hyena. Go ahead and pause the video to give yourself a chance to discuss, and then we'll go ahead and see what the right answer is. Okay, so we are looking for the animal on this list that is not a feline, that is not a type of cat. And the correct answer is D, a hyena. Even though hyenas are more closely related to cats than they are to dogs, they are still not a true species of feline. In fact, they are more closely related to fossas and mongooses, which are also not part of the feline grouping. However, tigers definitely are a feline, as is the lynx. There's a couple different types of lynx. They tend to live in colder areas. We have them in the northern parts of North America and in the north north parts of Europe and Asia. And this is a caracal, which is a medium-sized cat that we find over in Africa and parts of Asia as well. So these three species, the tiger, the lynx, and the caracal are all felines, but our friend the hyena is not. Okay, moving right along to number two. Blank are the largest cat species in the world. We are looking for the biggest. Is it A, tigers? B, lions, C, jaguars, or D, leopards. Which of these is the largest? Go ahead and discuss. The correct answer here might be surprising to some of my friends, but the correct answer is A, tigers. Now, there are six different subspecies of tigers that are alive today. So let me start with that because not all of them are super big. The smallest subspecies of tiger is the Sumatran tiger, which typically lives in tropical forest habitats. And they're relatively small. They might be between two and 300 pounds at the max. The Amur tiger, which was previously known as the Siberian tiger, can weigh well over 600 pounds. To put that into perspective, our second largest would be the lion, and a large male lion weighs about 400 pounds. So a large Amur tiger has about 200 pounds on a gigantic lion. So this is a very, very large feline. Okay, let's keep talking about tigers for a minute. Number three, a group of tigers is called an ambush or a what? A, a herd, B, a flamboyance, C, a kettle, or D, a streak. What do we call a group of tigers? Go ahead and discuss. This one is also a little bit tricky because typically we don't find tigers living in a group. Tigers are solitary, which means that they like to live alone. The only time we ever see really tigers coming together is if it's a breeding pair and they're actively breeding, or if it's a mom and her cubs. And when there's a mom and her cubs and we're referring to the group of tigers, we call them a 
streak. Now, again, this one was kind of tricky because we don't really hear that very often because we usually don't talk about groups of tigers. A herd is usually what we use for animals that have hooves, like an elephant or a giraffe. We would say that that's a herd of animals. Flamboyance is a favorite of mine. That is what we call a group of flamingos. And a kettle is a name that we give to a group of vultures when they're flying around in the sky together as a group. So all four of these are the names that we give to animals in a group, but only streak or ambush is used for tigers. All right, let's move on to a different big cat. Number four, jaguars hunt more species than any other cat. They can eat up to blank species. So we're talking about the amount of animals, the amount of species that a jaguar can hunt. Can they hunt A, 36 different types of animals, B, 48, C, 52, or D, 85? How many species is a jaguar capable of hunting Okay, are you guys ready to be amazed? Jaguars are incredible predators. They have the strongest bite force pound for pound of any big cat. Their bite is so strong that they can crack open a turtle's shell. So eating up to 85 different species is not that hard for the powerful predator, the jaguar. Not only can they eat turtles, but they also can eat caimans, which are like small crocodiles that we find in their habitat. So in this first little video here, you can see this jaguar sneaking up on the caiman in the water. They're excellent swimmers, so that is no problem for a jaguar. And then unlike other cats who usually will try to go for their prey's throat, the jaguar goes for the back of the skull and they can kill their prey with one bite. So not only can they hunt in the water, they also can hunt on land. And in our second picture here, we see how good they are at climbing. So they also can hunt up in the trees and climb around to get a good vantage point. Okay, you guys, we're gonna keep talking about jaguars for a second. How can you tell a jaguar and a leopard apart? A, by where they live, B, by their spots, C, by their size, or D, all of the above. Take a minute to discuss how can we tell a jaguar and a leopard apart? Okay, the correct answer is D, all of the above. Jaguars and leopards are very commonly confused. I get asked all the time, what's the difference? The biggest difference is they're two completely different animals. They're different species. Not only are they different in size, leopards tend to be a little bit longer and leaner, a little bit skinnier, and jaguars tend to be a little bit stockier. They've got wider heads and wider bodies. You also can tell them apart by their spots. So in the left photo here, this is a leopard. And if we look at their spots, they have what we call rosettes, where instead of being a polka dot like a cheetah has, they have more of an open circle. So you can see here on the leopard, their rosettes. But if you look at the rosettes on a jaguar in our picture on the right, you can see that they actually have a polka dot inside of their rosette. So you can tell the jaguars and the leopards apart by their spots or their rosettes, by their size, and by where they live. Jaguars are native to the Americas, so in South America, up through Central America, and even in parts of the southern United States, we find jaguars. We would never find a leopard there. Leopards are over in Africa and Asia. We will never see a leopard and a jaguar in the same spot unless you're at the zoo, because they live in completely different areas. 
Okay, we just mentioned the cheetah. Let's talk about the cheetah a little bit more. How long can cheetahs maintain their top speed for, which is about 70 miles per hour? For A, less than 30 seconds. B, about a minute. C, for 90 seconds. Or D, for 110 seconds, which is just under two minutes. Go ahead and take a minute to discuss how long can cheetahs maintain their top speed for. Okay, so these little videos here on the right do a great job showing us just how cheetahs are able to run so fast. In the top photo, look at the amount of time where the cheetah's feet are completely off the ground. They're using their momentum to basically fly through the air. They're able to take really huge steps. So they're able to reach those speeds of 70 miles per hour in a very short amount of time but they can only maintain that speed for about 30 seconds before they have to worry about their bodies overheating. So cheetahs might have speed, but they do not have endurance. They cannot keep up that speed for too long. So if they're gonna go on the hunt, if they're gonna chase down a little gazelle like this, they have to get close enough where they would be able to chase it down in just a matter of seconds. Number seven, mountain lions. Mountain lions have more names than any other cat. Which of these is not one of those names? So which of these is not a name that we give to mountain lions? A, a catamount. B, a puma. C, a panther. Or D, a wild cat. Go ahead and take a minute to discuss. The main reason that mountain lions have so many names is because they have a gigantic range. They used to be found throughout most of North America, at least most of the United States, and all the way down through Central America, well into South America. So in all these different regions where they were found, the local people started giving them names. And that's how they ended up with so many. They actually hold the Guinness World Record for the species with the most number of names. However, wildcat is not one of those names. Though they are a cat that lives in the wild, this is not usually a name that we give to mountain lions. Catamount is puma also is, and panther, mountain lions in the eastern United States, the only place that they're really left is in Florida, and in Florida, we happen to call them the Florida panther. Now, this is very different than a black panther. Another question I get asked a lot is, what is a panther? And it's kind of confusing. A panther could be a Florida panther, which is a mountain lion, but a black panther is just a jaguar or a leopard that happens to be black in color. So just like sometimes animals can be born albino where they don't have any of that pigment, animals can also be born the opposite of that where they have a bunch of pigment and they so they have a really dark coloration. So a black jaguar or a black leopard is often referred to as a black panther, but a panther is not a true species. Okay, sorry, that was a little extra tidbit of information. Let's keep moving on to number eight. Bobcats can climb to the top of a 45 foot tall cactus. Is this true or false? Go ahead and talk about it. Okay, wouldn't you know, in the Sonoran Desert, in the southwestern part of the United States, we have very tall cactus here. We call them saguaros, and they can grow more than 60 feet tall. And somebody was lucky enough to catch a bobcat escaping a mountain lion. 
by climbing up a 40 foot tall cactus. So let's take a look here. Here we can see our bobcat friend sitting all the way up on the tippy top of that cactus. And there we have a better photo. So to get away from that mountain lion, the bobcat scaled the cactus all the way up to the top and was up there for quite some time, kind of making sure the mountain lion was gone and maybe figuring out how on earth the bobcat was going to get down. So this is not something we see often, but this picture does prove that they are capable of it. Okay, number nine, let's keep going. We have two more. Why do snow leopards have a long tail? They are not the only cat with a long tail. So why do snow leopards and some other cats have long tails? A, for camouflage. B, to grab onto prey. C, to feel around, to sense their surroundings. Or D, for balance. Go ahead and talk about it. Okay, there are many, many animals that have long tails, right? An animal like a spider monkey might use their long tail to grab onto something, um, but not a snow leopard. None of the cats use their tails to grab onto things. Instead, they use their tails for balance. When you're a snow leopard and you live up on a really rocky mountainside, you're gonna be bouncing around between those rocks and you gotta make sure you don't lose your balance and fall down. So just like humans, when we're trying to balance, we hold our arms out to the side and we use that to kind of keep our center of gravity. Well, their tail works in the same way. They can move it side to side to help them keep their balance. So mountain lions, who we just talked about, do the same thing because they're doing a lot of bouncing around as well. All right, our last question, number 10, the serval. Servals have exceptionally long necks and legs. So some people call them A, tiger cats, B, lion cats, C, crocodile cats, or D, giraffe cats. Go ahead and talk about it, our last question of the day. All right, well, if we're gonna be thinking about animals that have long necks and long legs, one comes to mind right away for me, the giraffe. So we call servals giraffe cats. And like other cats, they have very silly ways of hunting. They're great at jumping so they can dive down into the grass when they hear, see, or smell any little rodents running around. Wow, you guys, what a fun trivia session today. I hope you guys learned a few new things about some very cool feline species. If you want to do trivia live with me or one of our other zoologists and maybe meet a few live animals along the way, be sure to check the description below and we will see you guys next time.